All right, everybody, welcome back to the Get It Done podcast. I'm Joe Zanka, your host, co-founder, COO of On Demand Storage, who sponsors our podcast. And today I'm with my guest, Joseph Fung of Uvaro. Joe, how's it going? Really good, really good, Joe. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. It's it's great to meet you. Um, you know, I've done some research on you and you seem like someone who um, has had a pretty extensive career and is doing something that's, um, you know, really unique and cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm I'm glad to have you on the show to talk about, you know, yourself, Yuvaro, and learn a, lo- a little bit more about you and your experiences. Thanks. Likewise, I, I I love hearing your story, and I always love visiting the Boston, the Cambridge area, so it's always good to, to get a chance to chat with somebody else's base there. Yeah, yeah, we do a lot of work up in that area, and uh, I'm actually in Boston myself at the moment, so nice. it's um, the next time you're up here, maybe we can uh, meet up and hang out. Oh, definitely. Um, but in the meantime, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, and, uh, and maybe take a step back before you are talk about your career and how you got into doing what you're doing today. Oh, for sure. So, uh, a good way to describe me tech entrepreneur, I studied computer engineering, ran a number of software companies. I've closed companies, sold companies, done bootstrap venture backed. The last company that I ran, we sold to NetSuite. Uh, and then I ran their global HR software business for a while. Uh, so I've had a lot of software experience, but now, I've taken that experience and we're running a a school. You know, we're helping people get into tech through sales. So we run a training program to teach people how to sell software and technology. And then we pair them with great tech companies and then watch their careers take off like rocket ships. It's so much fun. Wow. That sounds like a lot of fun. So this is, this could be someone like me who, I mean, I'm running my own business, but let's say for example, I um, had aspirations to become a, a tech salesman. I would reach out to you or you borrow and you'll basically enroll in your program and hopefully learn how to do that prior to even getting a job at somewhere else. And then you guys would actually help find, you know, a career path for me once I graduate. That's it. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, we do have a few founders and executives who want to, you know, polish the skills, learn the tech, learn the lingo, but by and large, most of our students are people who are, you know, maybe they, they're unemployed, like we've had bartenders and restaurant servers and people in tourism, uh, or people that are in sales, but in an industry where it, they feel like they're limited, or they don't see the future, like uh, we've had people in insurance sales or automotive sales, and they want to get into tech. Uh, we teach them all the lingo, the technology, the process, and then we help them with their job search in two ways. One, we facilitate a lot of one to one interactions because we've got a huge database of partners. Uh, But more importantly, kind of like sales, your job search, the more focused you can be, the better you can fit your goals, the better your success rate, because spray and pay doesn't work. And so we really help with that career coaching and guidance. And the coolest part is that we don't charge tuition until after you land a job. And so our incentives are aligned. And that's what makes us hold ourselves accountable to helping people land really great roles. And so yeah, really cool. I think that's really cool. I think the business model is fantastic. I think that, um, you know, because typically once someone's trained up and running, you know, the tech sales is um, you're, you're selling big ticket types of things. There's a lot of opportunity to really make a good amount of money um, as an individual. And so, but, you know, for the types of clientele that you're talking about coming out of pocket that, yeah, that seems to be like kind of the the roadblock at the beginning of something. So you enabling people to to sign up for your program for free and learn what they need to learn, get a job and then be able to just, you know, pay back the tuition. Um, I mean, I think that that's a fantastic way to go about doing it. Did you guys come up with that right from the beginning or is it something that evolved over time? So the, the model we had right from the get go, uh, it's not our idea though. The, the idea of that kind of income based and income share agreement is how it's you know structured. So you're not paying anything until you're earning income. Uh, that was really pioneered by a lot of the programming boot camps where they're trying to teach people how to be coders, where they're trying to teach them how to, you know, be data scientists. But the really interesting thing is everyone assumes to get into tech, you have to be technical. You have to learn how to code. And, you know, that's true for like 14% of the workplace in tech, but 30, 40% of big tech companies are, you know, comprised of you know, sales and marketing hires, and you don't need to be technical. And so we took a playbook that worked in a smaller niche and brought it to the sales and and marketing side of things. And it's just been, it's been taking off like crazy. And the life stories are, I've sold a lot of software and don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm sure you see this when you help a business move problems forward, it feels good, but you're kind of removed from what it means to somebody at home. We're helping people transform their lives, their families' lives, their personal situations. And 
like, wow, I, I've, I've never felt so fulfilled. It's such a delight. No, it's incredible. I mean, when you think about, you know, the there's so many people out there that, are, that might feel stuck in either their career or, you know, they have aspirations to um, take some sort of leap, but, you know, there's a lot of barriers to entry when it comes to that type of stuff, whether it's cost or whether it's um, just risk in general. And with a program like yours to be able to, you know, take time. Now, is this like a full-time job? Could somebody support, um, maybe do another job while they're in your program learning and continue totally. to make income? Yeah. So the program itself is two hours a day, five days a week for 12 weeks. And we run them morning, midday, and in the evening. So like we talk about get it done. Um, our earliest class is 9 a.m. Eastern. And we'll often have folks on the West Coast joining in. And so they're joining class at 6 a.m. their time, cranking through it, then going to their day job. Um, and our last class in the evening starts at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. Wow. So just after work for the West Coast. And we've got a number of time slots in between. So yeah, they, a lot of people juggle both. Yep. But in all honesty, about just over half of our students are currently unemployed when they enroll. Oh, and wow. so for them, this is really about accelerating that recovery. And that's so empowering because everyone's been hammered this last year, year and a half. And so yeah. being able to make even a small dent in that is is really, really rewarding. Now, how are you marketing this to people? You know, how, how are you getting the word out? Because it seems like, you know, it's a it's a B to C type of relationship. You need to get in front of, um, you know, you need to get in front of individuals. It's not something you reach out to a business and really do. So what, what are the strategies behind that? Totally. So uh, a good chunk of our, our students do come in from referrals. I mean, I mean, if you think back, you probably know someone who's, you know, maybe in a sales role, they're not, you know, honoring the income they want to, or they're complaining about the role or the company and they say, hey, you know, I'd love to be doing something better and bigger. And those referrals are, are, are huge. And so I do a lot of podcast interviews, <laughs> but uh, honestly, our, our biggest levers are uh, social and paid search uh, because- oh, wow. Okay. People do a lot of searches like, uh, you know, questions like, how do I get into tech? Or uh, how do I quit my job? Or things like that. Uh, and then social works really well because we have just amazing success stories and they play really well on social media. Absolutely. Um, you know, people, that's that's where you can get in front of, that's where you can get in front of the most people. That's where you can retarget people. Um, there's mm -hmm. so many different cool strategies you can use um on social to be able to reach you know who you're trying to reach um and like you said paid search is obviously fantastic for this too because it's people who are actively looking on the internet um for ways to further their career or change their path and so if you guys can show up there then um you know that's it, show up there tell your story the right way which is a fantastic one then you know that's how you're gonna be able to attract all these people the the funny part the thing we're struggling with most right now uh, and i mean embarrassment of riches our results, our numbers sound too good to be true. And so when you slap these onto an ad on social media, it looks sketchy because the numbers just look too ridiculous. Like uh, the median time, you know, for someone finishing our program to landing a job is 17 days. Wow. It's, it's, it's amazing. And, and we've had hundreds of people go through our program. And when someone's struggling in a job search, you know, that doesn't sound credible. I mean, it makes sense. You spend three months with us. We're coaching you. We're networking you. We're introducing you. Yeah. So, I mean, that job search is like three months, 17 days. Like, it does sound reasonable when you break it down, but that idea, like 17 days on its front, you know, average increase in salary, just over two X, like the, uh, it's fun. I love sharing the numbers are great, but yeah, in a social media ad, it always raises eyebrows too. Oh, definitely. I mean, that, that's incredible though. That it really is. Now, Joe, you're a entrepreneur yourself, and um, you're obviously talking to a lot of people who maybe are at a point in their life where they feel as though they're struggling um, for one you know, reason or another. Talk to me about a time that, you know, during your entrepreneurial journey, journey or your career where, you know, times got tough and maybe how you personally were able to get through something like that. Oh, my goodness. I, it, that's the, I'm sure you see this, Joe, with your journey. It's like up, ups and downs all the times. And so... Like one day it's the, the highest high and then the next day it's like the lowest low. It's uh, a daily thing when it comes to it entrepreneurship, is. honestly. And like, that, yes. that's what I've really noticed, you know, over, especially over the last few years is we've been able to grow, um, higher employees, you know, it's one day, like, it's just, you, you come home, you feel like, you know, you're on top of the world. And the next day, you know, you get a couple bumps in the road and, and, uh, and I, we like to call them, um, 
you know, like, basically like a humble, you know, we, we get a humbling day. Like we, we just had a glass of humble pie yeah. for this day because like five or six things just went wrong. You weren't even like, this came out of nowhere. <laughs> You're like, okay, well, totally. all right, we're back down to the bottom again. <laughs> Man, I, in all honesty, the last, the last year, year and a half has been such a roller coaster of ups and downs. I feel like the best answer to that question, I'm, I'm going to be able to give in a year or two when I can reflect back. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When I think about those really tough days, I mean, one of my earlier companies, it, actually, there's a couple of things that stuck out to me. The first was, uh, so it was bootstrap company. We're selling software to help people power their websites, you know, helping mostly advertising agencies help their clients. So it's kind of like B to B to B we're selling through a channel. Um, and one year, my business partner, a young kid, kid must've been about seven at the time. And, uh, uh, I'd asked him, you know, if, if Trey was doing hockey again this year, he's like, no, no, we're, we're not doing hockey this year. Cause we didn't pull enough money out of the company. We didn't earn enough money for his son to play hockey that year. Oh, and wow. Like just realizing, I mean, when you're, when you're running a company, you know, like you often your employees get paid, the, the owners, the founders get paid last. You put yourself at the end of the kind of the end of the bread line. And that, uh, that season really recognizing that, you know, we're not just responsible for us and our employees, but there's those knock on effects on the mm. families. Oh yeah. Um, it was interesting how that year I felt the pressure of entrepreneurship more than I'd ever had because it made it really real the impact that we were having when we won and when we lost uh, and that that was a journey that was a, a tough year where we everything from you know pulling out cash advances on our credit cards to make payroll to hiring and firing uh you know friends into sales roles it was a an interesting year it's 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 very difficult it's um it's something that I don't think a lot of people who experience maybe you're going into entrepreneurship, realize, um, I think they realize it's going to be tough. I think they realize it's going to be something that, um, you know, they're going to have to work harder. Um, they're going to have to sacrifice, but some of the things that you're talking about, um, are very real. You know, there's a lot more people on the journey with you than you think when you first get started. So it's like, you know, for me, then when I got started, I was 24. Um, and fortunately for me, you know, I was, I, I was able to move back and live with my parents for like a year and a half until I got to get myself off the ground, but they're on the journey now. You know what I mean? Like they're, yeah. they're supporting me. Um, if you have a relationship, you know, whether it's a girlfriend or a, a, a wife, um, they're on the journey. Uh, kids obviously completely on the journey, but then even friends, you know, even friends and distant family who maybe you're used to seeing a lot before, maybe um, you're at a time in your life where, you know, in your mid twenties or whenever it may be that, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things to go out and do. There's trips to go on. There's this, and, and you're not available to do any of those things. So there's a lot of people who, when you take that leap, um, inherently kind of take it with you. And, you know, when you go through tough times, that's when you really start to feel that. Um, but the goal, I think, of every entrepreneur is to be able to rise at, 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 at some point in time, you know, rise out of that and be able to give back to all those people that inherently took that journey with you in one way or another, you know what I mean? And, uh, and, and hopefully maybe make enough money or, or be able to provide, you know, whatever your services to, to all those people that kind of jumped on with you. Your, your comment about the, the friends and everything, uh, brought over, I think a really good, the, the opposite side of that, that roller coaster experience to mind. Um, I found trying to deliberately share personal details and be extra authentic with my uh, kind of coworkers, my customers, my suppliers uh, has paid really interesting dividends in unusual ways. Because you're right, that there's a lot of friends you don't get to spend time with, a lot of social activities you don't get to. But people who are in that entrepreneurial journey themselves, you can forge new friendships in, in unique ways. We had a, with one of my previous companies, we had a fractional CFO brilliant individual. He's been an entrepreneur, a venture capitalist. He's doing fractional CFO work. He's keeping our house squeaky clean. We'd raised millions of dollars, tons of pressure. Uh, literally, I wasn't eating well. I was sleeping well. I had like just acid reflux all the time. So my health was suffering. Uh, and uh, Jason was his name, was trying to keep me on an even keel. Uh, and uh, I kid you not, like our friendship suddenly took off when we both, re- I don't even know how it came up in conversation, realized Previously, we had each studied circus arts 
I'm talking about like like acrobatics and trapeze stuff. It's like, you know, like kids do gymnastics and you could do stuff on the side. Yeah. I know, like random, that stuff never comes up at work, but it came up and it sparked an interest. And now years now we've been hanging out. We'll go to concerts together. We're spending time together. We've got that connection that was very uh, business oriented. It was very professional to start, but blossomed into a friendship where we're now connected at, at multiple levels that never would have happened if we weren't both comfortable being vulnerable and authentic in a professional environment. So I, I try to take that to heart now. Like, let's just be really honest and genuine with people because we'll forge new connections that otherwise wouldn't happen if we were just really standoffish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you got to be able to, um, you, you got to be able to be yourself. I mean, obviously you got to be able to wear different hats as an entrepreneur, but you, you mm -hmm. I think you want to approach it um, the way you're talking about, just in a, the most authentic of ways. And you want your employees to do the same thing. And you, and you want to hear from them, you know, when, when they're seeing something within your organization that um, maybe you're not seeing or, or they're seeing, or, you know, if they want to form relationships like you're talking about and, and get out there and, um, you know, take the relationships from just a professional setting to, um, you know, a, a more of a friendship type of setting. You, you got to be willing to do that as an entrepreneur. You got to be willing to take those steps. I think that like culture is, is, is everything in an organization and, and, um, really focusing on building that and, and making it so that, you know, you become close, you make, you make really like lasting relationships with those people that, that work for you and with you. Um, that, that's just a, another whole aspect to this journey. Like, you know, that isn't talked about a lot of time, you know, the, yeah. the impactful relationships that you can make as an entrepreneur more so than just like the money or the, the company you built. It's like the relationships are, are an equal, if not greater um, piece of that pie. And I, I'd even go so far as to, to not even just talk about the people you work with, like your vendors and stuff, but also your customers. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have, we have all these students who are going through these interesting life changing circumstances. You know, one comes to mind recently, recent grad, uh, even before he graduated, landed a role at this wicked software company that helps other companies reduce churn. Like a hundred something people, rapidly growing, amazing career. Um, prior to this, he was an electronic music producer. So he's making music, he's DJing, he was working on all that on the, on the side, coming through our program to really focus on, uh, you know, that growth. And he ran a set, uh, one evening, he got a bunch of his classmates together, he was sharing some of his tracks and I never would have been invited to that if I hadn't shared with the team and with the students that I like making electronic music on the side. Oh, wow. And so they're like, Hey, you know, James is pulling together a set. He's going to share some of his stuff. You know, you should come and hang out. So it's like evening on zoom. We, we all brought a drink. We're listening to some of his music. It's amazing. So we're all following him on Spotify now. And uh, that connection, knowing that customer, knowing that person, his life story is now so much more impactful and our relationship is, is it benefited immensely from it. So yeah, it goes all around your company. Yeah. I mean, that's a really cool story. I love that. And I, I think that, um, to your clients and to your, you know, when you think about even some of the vendors that like we work with and I take a step back and think about it, you know, the ones that uh, it's nice when you're, when you're close with those people and you, and you form a relationship that, um, you know, you can, even if it's like doing something like go to the Patriots game, like, you know, I, hmm. I, I always see, um, I'm not, I'm not quite, I've been to a degree at that point in business, but I'm not quite at that point of business where, you know, your maybe your job moves from being like the salesperson to the, the entertainer quote unquote. But <laughs> I always, um, I always look up to those people like me you know, my mentors and role models in business who have had successful careers, been successful entrepreneurs and, um, and then, you know, at a certain point in time in their career, their whole job is just to make meaningful relationships with their customers and to, um, you know, take them out to whether it's wine and dine or just get to know them better or go visit them on site. You know, that type of stuff to me is, um, is what business is all about. And I think it's really cool. And I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting to that point where, you know, um, maybe I'm spending a, a good amount more time doing that, building, building these types of relationships and friendships. Uh, it's funny you talk about the uh, the Patriots game. Uh, good, good humble pie moment. Uh, my last company, while we were in the midst of selling it, uh, so the acquiring company, of course, is trying to keep us really excited, keep that friendship going really well, keep us really close. Uh, and I was out of our Canadian headquarters 
so near near the Toronto area. Um, our head of sales and marketing is based in Boston, so we had an office in the Boston area. And uh, the team here invites me to the Jays game. Yeah, they got a box. It's really nice. There's lots of pizza, drinks. We bring Jason, that uh, that CFO yeah. I mentioned. Uh, so we're hanging out to enjoy the game, uh, and. Yeah, it's beautiful. And if you've seen box seats, I mean, they're it's like right down the third baseline. You can see the game. Nice. Uh, yeah. Beautiful shot. And so I, I take a quick selfie. And I flip it over to Mark, my head of sales and marketing. And uh, I'm like, hey, check it out. You know, we're at the box. The team here is whining and dining us. They're treating us really well. What I didn't know was that the team on the Boston side was also trying to woo us. Uh, and so they also wanted to take Mark out to the game except they had front row seats right behind the plate. And so he sends me a selfie where they're watching the game in Boston and they're right behind home plate because they've got a couple of front row seats there. He's like, oh, nice for you. Not, not too bad. You know, mine's okay too. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it, clearly they value the head of sales and marketing more than the CEO. You know, that lets <laughs> you know where the priorities are. I totally agree. Totally agree. <laughs> I like that story. I, um, no, I just think that that's such a cool part of, of business when you get to a certain level, you know, um, just building those relationships. You know, I have a close, a mentor of mine who's, who's retired now, you know, sold his business off and he still has such, you know, he has really good relationships with people he met through just doing business. Um, and just through, um, and they were vendors of his, or like you said, clients, customers, um, you know, they, there was a shipping company and they did a lot of jobs with, um, with like law offices. And so he has friends that, you know, maybe still practicing law or maybe they've retired too, where, but they developed that bond and they still go to games together and they still, you know, go to, you know, each other's kids events through doing business together. I think that that's always just a really cool piece of um, that journey when you, when you get to that point, for sure. Do you have any, um, you know, yourself now in your career, do you have any mentors or role models that have been uh, impactful to you? Oh my goodness. Um, so one of my touchstone comments, one of the things that I use is just the idea that all feedback is a gift, you know, whether, whether it's intended positively or negatively, uh, you still learn something from it. So I've got a, a whole room of people that are my go-tos in, in terms of learning. Um, I'm really, really fortunate that my brother-in-law is also an entrepreneur and we're two very different people. So we tackle problems very differently. Um, he's, extremely outgoing and charismatic and he's such a passionate leader people really want to follow him and i tried to emulate a lot of what's made him successful in the way i run as a leader whereas i tend to be much more analytical by the numbers logical and you know know all the ins and outs of my business and uh, he's helped me be a more well-rounded leader just listening and following the way he builds a company mm -hmm. um, one of my earliest mentors uh was actually my mother who was a very successful entrepreneur in the financial services space. Oh wow! A very accomplished speaker, uh, a writer, runs an, an innovation hub uh, here in Canada. Um, she not only opened doors for me, but I think set the stage for how I think about enabling others. Uh, so, not only did she say, "Hey, you could do something if you put your mind to it," but she'd actively seek out opportunities to make that doable. And so my my, my first entrepreneurial journey, she went and helped introduce me. She brought me to the first potential customers. So when I think about now enabling my team, my employees, my kids, I think about how can I emulate that in my day-to-day -day yeah. practices? And yeah, so many people that I learn from daily. Well, you're doing it with your students, you know, you're um, mm -hmm. giving them the opportunity to not only learn how to do it. It's one thing, and I've learned this a lot, you know, even just through talking to people, um, it's one thing to learn a, a bit of information to to take a class right but then it's another thing to actually be able to apply it so like for example i talked to a guy on my show uh a week ago and and he runs a real estate boot camp so he teaches mm -hmm. people how to invest in multifamily property now there are obviously hundreds of of books out there that would teach you the, you know the ins and outs of investing in multifamily property what to look for and you could read all those and and you know learn as much as you possibly can, but then it comes time to apply your knowledge. And there's a lot of humps that are in the way that like, you know, if you've never done it before, you're going to run into. And so same thing with you, you know, with your, with your students, like you said, you know, your mother was able to enable you to go out and find some customers Well, you're enabling people to go out and find 
jobs after they've learned what you've taught them in your course. And so I think that that's, you know, cause one thing to, again, fill your brain with all this information and, and feel confident about what you just learned, but it's another thing to be able to actively apply it right away. Because I think if you don't apply it right away, then it gets a little stale. And so, you know, the companies like yours that are doing that and giving people not only the knowledge, but then direct application immediately after, um, that's just so much more powerful in my mind. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. even personally, I've read so many things about different things, like ideas or, you know, even real estate, for example, like, but when it comes time to actually apply it, you know, you, you get a little bit stuck um, if you're not, you know, kind of given that boost. And so yeah. I, I really do um, admire the, the business model that you've created. And I think inherently it sounds like it came from, you know, some of your past experiences with people who have, who've given you that ability. There is, there's a lot of the, uh, like our own personal journeys in the fleshing out of it. Like e even just the reason we're focused on sales, you know, came from a personal experience. My, so I've got two sisters. Uh, I'm lucky enough that one of them is a co-founder in this business. She's our COO, brilliant individual. Um, our other sister is also equally brilliant, but lived across the country and was an entrepreneur in her own right. So she was running her own business. She was, uh, she was running a karate school, uh, a personal training firm and was launching a food business, like incredibly accomplished. Um, I've seen her sell so much stuff. Uh, she went through some life changes and said, you know what? I'm, I need to take a break from being an entrepreneur because I need to take care of my family, my kids. I'm going to spend a bit of time working somewhere so I can focus on you know, kids and family and stuff a little bit differently. Uh, and it was so painful watching as she was reaching out and trying to realign her career and see blockers left, right, and center. And I, I know she gets out. I know how smart she is. I know how accomplished she is, how driven and you need grit. She had all that in spades, but she didn't know the tech terms like SAS, MRR. She, she didn't have a tech company on her you know, resume. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. And she wasn't getting any interviews and seeing doors getting slammed in her face left, right, and center is what really helped us see that, you know what, not, not only is there a, a talent gap, there are barriers that are unreasonably hard and we can fix those. And so it, what's, what's amazing is that she crushed it. She, she ended up working as a software sales rep, did so well. We ended up bringing her back as an instructor because she also has a master's of education and wow. now she's one of our instructors. So I get to work with both my sisters. It's amazing. That is amazing. Good for you. I mean, I like that story. You know, I think it's, it goes to show you that there are certain qualities that like, whether or not we like it, um, some of these companies are looking for, um, mm. like the, the knowledge and the background and, you know, the fact that, um, oh, she's never sold tech before. So even though she's created products and created services with her own mind and, and brought them to market and sold them, um, I mean, that might not be enough for some of these tech companies that, you know, just looking for, you know, a specific type of resume. So it's, it, it, it goes to show you that, that, you know, you guys are, are focusing on the right thing because, you know, you're just educating people is one thing and then actively allowing them to reap those benefits, mm -hmm. you know, immediately, like you said, within maybe 17 days, two weeks um, of finishing your course. You know, I think that's incredible. So I, uh, no, I'm really excited about what you guys have going on. It's awesome. And it sounds that's like true. you are too. Oh yeah. It's like every day, it's like every day we get a quote from somebody like you've changed my life. You've saved my life. We've had that three times so far. Uh, and we never know what we're going to get, but every day we get something like that. <laughs> That's awesome. So Joe, my last question I like to ask my guests is for a, uh, a book recommendation. Do you have anything that you've read throughout your career, maybe even recently or currently that um, you would recommend to the audience? Totally. Uh, I love those questions because I read a lot. One I've just recently finished and I love recommending is uh, Leaders Under Fire. I passed that, I passed a copy to about a half dozen entrepreneurs. Um, and I like recommending it because we've all gone through in the last year and a half, a, uh, there's gotta be a polite, politer way to put it, a, a firestorm. Let's go with that. <laughs> um, a firestorm of a year and a half. And yeah, although it's an allegory for how you deal with PR disasters, I think there's some real nuggets in there about how a small amount of preparation can really make a difference in the moment of crisis. And we're all coming out of this terrible crisis. I think there's a lot we can learn. So I'd go Leaders Under Fire. Conway Fraser is the author. Leaders Under Fire. I really like it. That's great. Yeah. Um, 
Well, look, man, this has been great. It's been awesome getting to know you. It's been awesome getting to talk about your company and your experiences. I really appreciate you coming on here and sharing with us um, all the all the insight and uh, and all the cool things you, you guys have going on. So um, thank you very much. And I, I, I really do wish you all the best luck in, in what you're doing because I think it's it's impacting the world in, a, in, in the right way. You know, you're really giving people, empowering people that um, deserve to be empowered. Thanks, Joe. And you as well. I really enjoyed the conversation. This has been a blast. It's been fun. It's been fun. So I look forward to um, next time you're in Boston, you know, give me a call and uh, we'll reach out via email and, and we'll maybe meet up and grab a coffee or something. Sounds good. Great. Thanks, Joe.